Hello, as promised at the beginning, we have with us the creator of the film, Pia, and we also have the heroine of the film, Eva, to, uh, as, to, to, com to compose a, a Q&A. Thank you so much for this very powerful piece of work that was presented in Berlinale this year, um, part of the Teddy Award uh, uh, selection. Um, okay, I'm going to ask the first question. Uh, how did this journey occur between uh, you two girls? I mean, how did you make this film a reality? How did the idea become a, a reality? Um, so, it started with um, Georgia, who has um, been part of this film from the very beginning. Um, and she uh, gave me Eva's blog, and she, we were working together at that point, she was like, um, Pia, you have to read this blog. Um, it's really uh, overwhelming for me, and I've been reading it a lot. Uh, read it and let me know if I'm stupid and bored at work, or if it's really genius. And I read it, and I found it really genius. Um, and yes, I was. Um, I I think I was intrigued by Eva's um, um, honesty, and to keep it simple. Um, and she was evoking a lot of things in me, so I, um, I said to Georgia, let's, let's contact Eva, and then we contacted her, and then we met her for the first time. And at that point, um, it was 2014, and um, Eva was living a little bit of a different life than now. Do you want to make No? Well, um, Yes, we met her. We, she was living in a Berlin apartment in Wedding. She had very long hair. She looked very different to now. And we were sitting in front of her. Um, I was doing sound very badly, and Georgia was doing the camera. And um, we asked her some questions, and she kept on talking and told us everything about herself. And there was, again, this very filterless, uncensored way of showing her self, which was, um, again, very intriguing for me. That's the way it started. Fantastic way to start a film. Okay, um, this feels like a complete revelation to the way you we view on uh, identity. And it feels like a complete deconstruction of gender norms. Was that intentionally made, or it was like, you found it on the way. And like circles around the things, maybe first, okay. or I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they knew exactly in the beginning what they wanted to do with it. They were just like, we want to do something with this person and let's do it. And I as well didn't know where it was going. And like, it started as an interview, then it became like a short documentary, then it turned into a movie and I was already part of it. And, uh, until the day of the premiere, I didn't watch it. I saw it for the first time at the premiere. And um, I was really afraid that like, it might turn, since it was a movie, about, it was like a huge task to make a movie about identity that sought to deconstruct identity, because at some point that's what it became. And um, I was really afraid that it would turn into like some identity politic type of thing, because that's what was on trend, let's say, when it started. And I didn't like it because, like, identity politics started as a movement that was seeking to destroy, like, I mean, instead of a movement that wanted to destroy the system that had killed us for centuries, in, it turned into a, move, um, a movement that sought to, like, be recognized by that system, which was something that I didn't want. Like, I didn't want the third gender on the passport. I didn't want no passport, no gender, no borders, all these things. I <laughs> have fans already. And so, you know, the whole identity thing is very complicated and... Uh, or simple. I mean, it, identity is like a projection and... Um, and I was like really impressed by what by what they managed to do, because like when I talk about the revolution in the end, like what I think when I say revolution is not like a single event that's just gonna turn the world upside down. 
it's, it's like a process in which like the material bases that like constitute identity, like a queer woman, um, a working class woman, a woman, are like abolished, like disrupted, and not not they're not anymore like relevant descriptor of any type of like social experience. So like what I what I want is like a world where we don't need any of this. Like, okay. uh, what else? Where did I want to go? Oh, well, I think they did a good job with that. So. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Both Berlinale as well. <laughs> so, okay, guys, you were in Athens at a point. I mean, we, we saw a little bit of the parliament and the... What were you guys doing here? Mm. We were visiting this woman sitting in the back there, Amy. Um, she was um, in the film. Um, and Eva and her had a relationship at that point, and um, Eva was like, um, meet these women, they're really interesting. And then we went to Athens. So we were here, it was, as I said in the beginning, it was the first week of real shooting. When I mean real shooting, it's, we had a DOP, like a person who's doing the camera and a person who's doing the sound, um, and not just me doing it shitty. So that was the first week that we really also had an idea of how to do this film because um, yeah, in the beginning we were just intrigued with Eva and, and the more we worked on it, the more we realized that um, we didn't want to make a personal portrait. It was not about, uh, this is the story of Eva and the background story of Eva and that's why she became the way she is and that's Eva Collet behind the curtain and that she's online that and offline that. No, it was more, what did she do to us? Like she kind of, she was like a mirror um, that we were looking at and we realized um, um, that was reflecting our own projection on her, you know, our own views on, on this woman. So in the end we wanted to do a film about that specific thing rather than a personal story. But it's, it's totally um, uh, a work that you do not see a character development, more of a, like a um, a visiting uh, 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 of life events, so it's it's refreshing as a as a, as, a, as a filmmaking. So, um, questions from the audience, please. The film said everything; it was perfect. No question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we brought them already from Berlin. They have to answer questions <laughs> or not. Yeah. <laughs> the money for the flight has to pay off somewhere. Exactly. Uh, Eva, if there was any second thoughts about the movie, so if you had any question, like interior question. I was afraid that they would try and like give like a reading of my life and like make something like moralistic or like give like a beginning and an end and be like, okay, this is how it started, this is how it ends, and also like. I was doing really badly and I was like, are they gonna end up making a movie about this girl that's like doing drugs and then she dies or something? You know, like, what are they trying to do there? I mean, I trusted them, but then like, in between I was like, how are they gonna do this? Like, how do you make a movie that's not telling a story? And probably the reason is that I don't watch that many movies, so I couldn't imagine it, but like, they made it. And uh, so that was the only thing, but that I was worried about, and it didn't happen, so that's good. Politically, you said that you are an anarchist uh, feminist. You are still now uh, that uh, identity... Well, I mean, that part of the movie is like one of these like, descriptions that like people used to put on their blog, you know? It's like something that I feel like that I've grown out of never like introduce myself as oh i have like a uh, borderline personality disorder you know like <laughs> these are all things that have been like attached on me from like the outside but i'm an anarchist i'm a nihilist anarchist <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can say something about this because i um, when i showed eva the f the film or the scenes for the first time we had to do it because we needed to do the voiceover right at a certain point in the edit it was always my voice saying things and at some point Eva came in to record and the only thing that she actually had a problem with but it was two things actually it was one moment where she walked on the street and she said some to somebody 
uh, like you know this phone call where she's um, um, Wait, talking about the sugar. There you have to do <laughs> they had to. They made me do like this pretend phone call, and I was just like, I don't know if I don't come back, call the police. But that wasn't serious. And I was like, guys, you you can't put in there like me saying call the police. Like I really had to fight about that. And also there was this description there that I really didn't want in the movie because I think it's terrible. But like, at the time when I wrote that, it made sense to have that on my blog because those were the topics I talked about and those were the people that I was seeking to get in contact with. Like, I was writing on there to like talk about my experience with like this kind of definition. Like as someone who's been like labeled BPD, someone who's labeled autistic or like this kind of things. And it made sense for me to find other people like me. But like if I had to write a description about myself now, first of all, I wouldn't do it. Second, I wouldn't talk in words that someone else has a touched on me, let's say. The disorders are more than the people. You know that. <laughs> you cannot define yourself by anything when it comes to that. Yeah. I mean, to go back on this, I think the, the way why it's in there, why the um, description where Eva is stating I'm that, I'm that, I'm that, I'm that, is because I'm, um, we were really keen on doing a film where in the end it's deconstruction of identity. But before you can do the deconstruction, you have to build something, you know? And um, you have to give some, like almost like meat to project something onto it. And um, I think that's why it was important to have these like tag, almost taglines on her before she can rip it away. Um, and I, I, I remember the moment where Eva said, you can't put that in the movie. And I was like, trust me, it's going to be abolished in the end. But we have to put it in the beginning, so. <laughs> Ε, τώρα η ίδια και δεν το πολύ κατάλαβα. Ε, Όμω στην ταινία λέει ότι είναι μια disorder, κάτι άλλο λέει, και μετά η ίδια όμω έχει δώσει αυτό το τίτλο στον αυτό το αυτοκίνητο. Έχει μεγάλη χρωματική Η ίδια έχει ε, θεωρήσει τον αυτό τη σε μια κατάσταση αυτοκίνητου. Τι σημαίνει αυτό για εκείνη, γιατί το έχει επιλέξει, αν δεν έχω καταλάβει τι έχει επιλέξει. It's kind of what I was talking about right now. I was like more talking about <clears throat> what I meant by mentioning that was like, I experienced like the sort of oppression that someone who's labeled that experience and I'm seeking like other people that have been put in this place by society, let's say. My stance on like BPD is that like, it's complete bullshit. I mean, it's a way of like, putting the blame on like the mentally ill person for like a disorder like i feel like bpd is nothing but post-traumatic stress disorder which is something that has a, a reason to exist because it, it's the only one probably disorder that individuates the cause but like bpd they're just telling you oh you're crazy i wonder why because you have this personality disorder but it totally ignores the environmental discourse so yeah. it, it, it all totally gets deconstruct at the end of the film you, okay. you just there's one mention in the beginning and you just break it at the end so yeah so we see that uh, questions more <laughs> I think I did go to the beach, but that was revolutionary in itself. I feel like just the fact, <laughs> sometimes I'm just like, just the fact that I'm still alive sort of is like uh, a step towards that process, you know, because like I'm just alive through so many of these things as a woman, queer woman, working class woman, you know, this just existing. I don't believe that people have the the duty of like, bringing about the revolution, you know? I feel like everyone has just the right to just <laughs> chill, and the fact that they're not, they haven't killed themselves yet is revolutionary in itself. But I am taking part in, like, stuff. <laughs> we can talk about that in private. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> life is a great gift for all. For us. This is how you call so private and private public. When so it is. It's the, the, the private political, it is. And um, I feel like every action really is political. And, but that wasn't the question, it's just me tripping. But yeah, I feel like the private is public. <laughs> but, um, yeah, let's not get started, yeah. The Les said that, right? Or not? I guess. The um, Les said it's the private is political. The Les said the really cool thing. Do you have, you, you know that quote better that we like. Uh, when I, I sent you that screenshot and I was like, he's like the little synopsis about our movie. Yeah. I wish um, we wait, how was it going? Um, that like when everything is kind of like... Ah, oh, yes. Like exactly. No, it's, uh, it's about the secret. Like if we put everything out there of ourselves, the only thing that actually becomes the secret is ourselves. Like the more you put out there, the more you become... But you, the more you vanish, which is actually the thing that kind of happened with Eva. Like when I first, when I stumbled upon her, I was like, man, she's like putting everything out there. And in an, in an equally, let's say, immoral in a good sense way, like there's no censorship on anything, but she's talking about the food in the same manner as she's talking about the things that we consider that should be private, like whatever that is. And um, the more she put out there, the more she disappeared. She was just like not tangible anymore. And um, that's so, yes, I, that quote makes a lot of sense. Did you get the quote? No. Yes. What do you mean by vanish? Uh, vanish, she just disappeared. No, I know what it means. I mean, how do you mean it? Well, like she was just not. Uh, well, it's very easy about the way of like, you know, you you're looking for ways to define people. I mean, you, the, or not people, anything that comes away along your way, just to cope with the world. So you're like, that comes along my way. Okay, that's that thing. That comes along. My, that's that thing. And with Eva, it was not possible. You were like, she came along your way, and she were like, all over the place. All over the place, and nothing at the same time. So. You were like very much thrown back on your own uh, per, um, perception. Uh, what happened was like by me trying to put a label on her, trying you to define her. All the labels. Yeah, but she made me aware that I'm trying to label and why, where my labels come from, like my society background, my. Uh, perception on women, my perception on men, my perception about whatever, my perceptions generally. And everybody has different ones. So what the end, in the end, the film uh, was about was we wanted to leave it to you, not, I don't want to give my, my perception never. I was, it's you dealing with her yourself <laughs> somehow, you know? I get it. Eva doesn't want to be defined, but she said, okay, go ahead and inbox me. So I'm going to inbox you, and I'm going to call you an artist, and I'm going to call you a very, very promising um, actress or actor. Uh, so we would love to see you again on the big screen, and we'd love to see your next film. You're a fantastic documentarist. Thank you so much for this great work. And uh, for the honesty and for non-ego... Uh, projection that you did and all the emotional uh, that uh, uh, involvement that you've shared with us. Thank you. Thanks to my partner, Puli Puli Kabe. Hello, Bradi.